from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, March the 12th, 2024. The IDF last night announced the death of 19-year-old Sergeant Itai Chen. Chen, who was also an American citizen, was believed to have been kidnapped during the October 7th massacre and held as a live hostage for these past five months. But his death has now been declared based on intelligence information that he was in fact murdered while battling terrorists on October the 7th, his body being held by Hamas in Gaza. His parents, Ruby and Chagit Khan, released a statement saying, our hearts are broken. We loved him so much and we would have done anything to bring him home alive. Thanking the Biden administration, members of the U.S. House and Senate from both sides of the aisle and the American people, for their unwavering support and prayers over the last 158 days, saying even more so today, we expect Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Biden to do everything in their power to bring Itai, as well as the other 133 hostages, back home to us. We have come to know all of the families who are waiting for their loved ones, and we will not stop working until every single hostage comes home. And President Biden, who met with the Chen family at the White House back in December, released a statement as well today saying, Jill and I are devastated to learn that American Itai Chen was killed by Hamas during its brutal terrorist assault on October the 7th. The president saying, I reaffirm my pledge to all the families of those still held hostage. We are with you. We will never stop working to bring your loved ones home. The IDF's ground operation continues in Gaza, where the IDF said troops located a terrorist compound containing weapons, located and dismantled rocket launchers, eliminated terrorists, and took out terror compounds and terrorist infrastructure. The IDF said it is still determining whether Hamas's number three in command was taken out in a targeted airstrike carried out on an underground compound in Gaza this weekend. The IDF saying we are still assessing the results of the strike and will inform the public of them when we are certain. We will continue to pursue Hamas leaders and everyone involved in the October 7th massacre, not only in Gaza. Over 100 rockets were fired towards northern Israel this morning from Lebanon. In response, Israeli Air Force fighter jets destroyed three of the launchers used to fire 70 of these rockets, it said, and hit two military headquarters of terror group Hezbollah. And in Samaria, the West Bank, the IDF said it thwarted a major terror attack, writing last night that in a joint operation with Israel security agency, the Shin Bet, troops took out a Palestinian terrorist who was armed with a weapon and an explosive device, who it said was on his way to Israeli territory to carry out an imminent suicide attack. And later today, the IDF said it was looking for a terrorist armed with a knife, who tried to stab an Israeli citizen in the area of Givat Ronen. There were no casualties there, and IDF forces were looking for the suspect. American vessels are on their way to the eastern Mediterranean to set up a temporary port on Gaza's coast to provide more aid to Gazan civilians, something President Biden announced in his State of the Union address this past Thursday. The ships include the Besson, CENTCOM said, a logistics support vessel carrying the first equipment to establish a temporary pier to deliver vital humanitarian supplies. Well, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley, is staging a sit-in in an effort to keep students safe on campus and know that they are not alone. The JTA reports Ron Hasner, the chair of Israel Studies at UC Berkeley, announced that he will not leave his office until the school does what he believes it should do, in light especially of recent intense anti-Israel demonstrations in the aftermath of the October 7th massacre. Hasner wrote, I am launching a sit-in protest against anti-Semitism and for student safety. If my students feel they cannot walk safely across campus without being bullied, then I will not cross campus either. 
saying he will eat, sleep, and teach from his office, which he said will be open at all hours of the day and night on weekdays and weekends to all students who do not feel safe or who have been subjected to anti-Semitic abuse or who wish to chat. The university was cited on Sunday saying the administration is committed to confronting anti-Semitism and holds Professor Hasner in great esteem and it is in conversation with him about his concerns. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, March the 12th at 7 o'clock, Blackstone Managing Director Yifat Oron talks about smashing the glass ceiling. At 8, as we ready our Purim costume soon, Justin Pine speaks with fashion influencer Leandra Medine Cohen about how getting dressed relates to Judaism. At 9, Paula Eiselt is on L'Chaim at 10, a discussion on sex education in schools with Simon Fleischer and Ora Weinbach. At 10.30, an encore of this newscast. And coming up next, it's ILTV's Insider. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, March the 12th, 2024. I'm Tisha Bader. I'm Yisrael Chaim.